What's good, y'all? It's your boy Ross back at again with another video. So, I'm gonna check out the never ending downfall of Ryback himself. Now, Ryback was positioned essentially when he was in WWE to be the next Goldberg. That's what he was positioned as. And at one point, he was the most over person in WWE at the time. The feed me more gimmick work, <clears throat> people wanted to see him. Was his in ring ability the best? No. Was his moveset iconic or revolutionary? No, but he was over. And the feet people were buying into him. And uh, things happened, and uh, it didn't work out for him in WWE. And ever since then, he's been on a crusade to expose WWE for the horrible company that they are. And I'm not going to lie to you. He... He, ha he makes some very good points, especially when it involves Vince McMahon. He, there's no denying some of the stuff that he brought up years after WWE. Fair points. But I also do feel like he, he became the person that thrived off the negativity of this quote-unquote company and, and used that as his brand, like anti-WWE and everything about WWE is awful and stuff like that when it's like I don't think he truly moved on from it and and really found like who he was outside of it that's just my personal opinion like you can have your gripe on a certain company or individual or whatever but if you never move on from it and it, or you give the optics like this is the only thing that you will ever talk about and people will only remember you about is your frustration with WWE it 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 doesn't lend well to people seeing that next chapter in your life that doesn't involve you talking about WWE. If that makes any sense. But we're going to check this out. Appreciate all the love and support. Let's get right into this one, man. Ryback. Whenever any fan hears that name, they'll either remember a wrestler who at one point was so over that people wanted to see him end CM Punk's yes. WWE title reign, whilst others will think of a Twitter poll. Ryback went from being a <laughs> WWE main eventer and one of the most over wrestlers in the company to just being a complete joke in the industry. Ryback's downfall is something that truly needs to be studied. Oh wait, that's what I'm here for. <laughs> WWE audiences were first introduced to Ryan Reeves when he was a part of the Million Dollar Tough Enough in 2004, and though he did not win the season of Tough Enough and did not win the show, he would still end up getting signed to the WWE, who clearly saw something in him and signed him to a developmental contract, and he would report to Deep South Wrestling. Ryan would train with Deep South Wrestling for a couple of years before OVW became the new WWE developmental, and his ring name was changed to Ryback. However, FCW would become the new developmental a couple years later, and Ryback would be repackaged as Skip Sheffield, and after a bit of time in FCW, would be brought onto WWE TV to be a part of the first season of NXT in February 2010, back when it was that really weird reality competition yeah. show. Skip Sheffield's pro was William Regal as he set out to win a WWE contract. However, Skip sort of failed to make any sort of impact on NXT. He was eliminated on week 12 as the third elimination of the show, finishing with just a 2-5 win-loss record and finishing 6th out of 8th. But despite not winning the show, Skip would still get his main roster opportunity as on the June 7th, 2010 episode of Raw, Skip Sheffield along with all the other NXT contestants would attack John Cena, CM Punk, the announcers and Wreck Ringside as the Great. Nexus had Great just segment. arrived in the WWE in one of the most infamous segments and moments in WWE history Facts. and a huge moment for the time. The Nexus would continue feuding with John Cena and this was a big spot for Skip Sheffield field to be in. I mean the Nexus were being presented as the top heel stable and were all involved in the main event angles of every single show they were on. Uh -huh. It was a really good spot to be on for his first TV spot but we all know what happened to the Nexus. We all know. They went to SummerSlam that- They went to SummerSlam and they were destroyed. 
<laughs> oh, John, John, John. That was that was a mistake, man. Yeah, to take on a team of the WWE roster in a 7v7 match. People like John Cena, Edge, Chris Jericho, the great Carly, Bret Hart. You know, all the stars. And of course, they lost this match as well as all of their credibility, which yeah. was just completely squandered after being built up for three months for no reason. Yeah. For that same month, Skip Sheffield would also get injured and would have to go through three surgeries in his ankle, leaving him out of action for a year and a half, Jeez. and he was effectively kicked out of the Nexus. In April 2012, Skip would make his return, but he would make his return as Ryback and he would go on a run of squashing folks. When I say a run of squashing folks, I mean it was damn near six months of uh -huh. Ryback nearly every single show just destroying and squashing one, two, or even sometimes three wrestlers in a matter yep. of minutes and saying, feed me, me more. more. And even if there was a subsection of fans chanting Goldberg at him, Ryback was getting over and this repackaging was a really good thing for him. And come October 20th, 2012 CM Punk needed a new challenger and the only active and built up enough wrestler to challenge him at the time yeah. was Ryback who when he was revealed as Punk's next challenger for Hell in a Cell would become the most over he's ever been yeah. in the company. There were fans who wanted to see him beat CM Punk. In fact, I'd go as far to say that a good majority of people wanted to see him beat CM Punk. Yeah. I think people were in that moment of yep Okay, I'm here for it. They've been building this guy up as unstoppable. There's only one person that can stop CM Punk right now. People wanted it. I'm not even going to lie to you. I kind of wanted to see it. I ain't, ain't going to lie. Like, are they really going to do this? Are they really giving him the Goldberg treatment and going to rocket ship him up to the WWE ladder? I, shit, I was down. I, I didn't have a problem with it. He was that over. Once again, like I said, his moveset wasn't nothing to you know go home about but he was over and it worked and people believed they bought punk. in however who didn't want to see him beat cm punk was of course the wwe themselves who were not intent on having ryback win the title from punk because of course they wanted the rock to do that mm. wwe had booked themselves into the corner ryback was so over but they didn't want punk to lose so what did they do? Well, they had referee Brad Maddox attack Ryback to help CM Punk get so the win stupid. at Hell in the Cell in a horrible finish and a dreadful swerve. Ryback's momentum hadn't gone just yet though and he would challenge for the title again, this time in a three-way match also involving John Cena uh -huh. at Survivor Series. This match would end with Punk winning via interference again, but this time though from The Shield who were making their debut. And uh -huh. this would kick off a feud between Ryback and The Shield with Ryback teaming up with Team Hell no to face the shield in a tlc match at tlc and ryback's team did lose but this match was awesome mm -hmm. he would enter the royal rumble match for the first time in 2012 entering last at number 30 and got five eliminations before being eliminated by john cena in the final two and this is where ryback would really start to stall in the wwe as every big match that ryback was in he was you knew what they were doing wwe you knew it was, they were trying to build up to the Rock and John Cena. You knew it. You knew it. So usually on the losing end of. At WrestleMania 29, in his first WrestleMania, he would have a match with Mark Henry, which he lost. And now, all the momentum yeah. that had been built up had officially just been yeah. destroyed. Ryback would turn heel the next night for the first time as Ryback, and despite losing to Mark Henry, would get to challenge John Cena for the title at the next two pay-per-views at Extreme Rules and Payback, but he was unsuccessful in both. Mm -hmm. And after this, he would kind of just coast around for the rest of 2013 with the WWE seemingly just not knowing what to do with Ryback and he did all sorts of things. He was a Paul Heyman guy at one point along with Curtis Axel. Remember Axel, The greatest tag team ever. <laughs> he also got to work with CM Punk again at Hell in a Cell, losing of course in yeah. an angle that Punk revealed he hated doing as he hated working with Ryback <laughs> and during this feud would make Ryback call himself an idiot backstage after he botched a table spot and hurt punk ouch and 2014 yeah. was also much of the same with ryback being relegated to being a jobber tag wrestler with curtis axel a major fall off from 2012 and i will say this he has every right 
Ryback to feel the way he feels, especially about WWE management, because they dropped the ball on him. They did. You don't book him in that match, that high-profile match, knowing that you plan on having The Rock be the one to beat um, to end uh, CM Punk's reign. You don't don't book him in that match. Put him in a high-profile mid-card match. You can do that. Like, it's stupid. It's dumb. That's a dumb thing to do. That WWE failed him. So I'm not going to sit up here and put all the blame on Ryback. He he deserves, he has every right to be upset. It's just how long you're going to continue to be upset and when are you going to move forward from it. 12. In August of 2014, he would undergo hernia surgery, leaving him out of action for a couple of months. But when he returned, he would get a good spot when he returned, and he would return as a baby face with his Feed Me More gimmick once again. And he was added as part of Team WWE to face Team Authority uh -huh. at Survivor Series. A really big spot to be in. And of course, at the show, Team WWE would win the match with help from Sting, and Ryback would resume life as a singles wrestler no more Rybaxel. And Ryback kind of found himself in a spot where he would wrestle on pay-per-views and get regular TV time and good spots to be in and good spots on cards, but he was usually on the losing end when it came down to it in the big matches. But at Elimination Chamber 2015, that would finally come to an end when Ryback won his first title, winning the Intercontinental Championship Chamber match in what was an awful match, by the way, <laughs> to, yeah, win his first title. It was a great moment for him. He would defend the title successfully against Big Show and The Miz at that year's SummerSlam, but would lose it to Kevin Owens at Night of Champions, ending his reign at 112 days in a pretty average title reign. And following this, Ryback would begin treading water again and needed something new. And something new is what he would get when in February 2016, he would abandon the singlet and would sport trunks and turn heel again. He had gone full Goldberg mode officially. <laughs> Kalisto for the US title at Mania 32 in a losing effort and then again at Payback also in a losing effort in what would be his final appearance with the WWE as on May 2nd he was sent home from TV tapings due to a contract dispute and the next day he'd post to his blog that this was due to lack of equal pay and creative frustrations from his end and three months later Ryback's release was finally finalized and he was gone from the WWE Mm -hmm. just like that. So overall, Ryback's run in the WWE wasn't that bad. He definitely underachieved for how over he was at one yeah. point. However, overall, it wasn't a bad run. But what caused Ryback to really fall off and become a joke is his activity post WWE, mm. particularly on Twitter, where on his page, you'll find posts like, Vince McMahon, like most promoters, has an insatiable urge to have control. He had no control watching his mom get beat up as a child, which is a horrendous thing for a kid to witness as their whore mom tries to make ends meet. Vince has failed to evolve you old man a just completely unhinged tweet and what nah, once again was it unhinged for sure did it make any sense for him to just be going at vince like that no but at the same time i'm gonna keep it a buck he's saying things that i'm sure other people have said and like i said it just came off especially for him, it's a bitter ex. Does he have a right to say that? Sure, go ahead. You know, he feels how he feels. But at the same time, it just, it was one of those things where it was like, oh, there goes Ryback saying something about WWE again. You know what I'm saying? And it just, it became, that became him. Instead of, all right, what are you going to do after that? What What's, what's going to be your next chapter in your life that's going to really push you forward? You know, that became who he was. One that is even more unhinged when you realize that this tweet came not too long after Vince's mother had passed away. Yeah, and as well and as that, and that was the thing too. His mom had just passed and he didn't really give a fuck. Like he didn't, he didn't care. That's why I was like, I get what he was saying and I, I'm pretty sure he has every right to be upset. But at the same time, sometimes you got to move with grace. Even when the person you feel like didn't move or grace with you. I I don't know. You know what I'm saying? It's just the timing of that. I don't know. It's, it looked like, damn, bro. Like, okay, we get it. You hate this guy, but damn. 
As this on Ryback's Twitter, you have tweets from him wishing death on Vince, making derogatory comments towards current WWE talent, and of course, the infamous tweet asking fans where they want to see him return, where the option to retire was clearly the winner. A tweet that he kept reposting and retire yep. kept on winning. This poll is now synonymous with Ryback's career and all he is really known for in wrestling today, a poll telling him to retire. <laughs> that is tough. Ryback has not wrestled since 2018 and there's no chance he'll ever return to the WWE due to his comments about the McMahons and his lack of goodwill with the fans that he has of course lost. Ryback's drop off in the last decade has quite been something, from being one of wrestling's top guys to being a joke who nobody wants to sign. But then again, has anybody introduced Ryback to Billy Corgan yet? Now that's a career opportunity for him. I can see it now, Ryback versus Tyrus for the NWA World Championship with a whole viewership of 12 people. I'm sure they'll love it. But that's been it from me, guys. I'll see oh you in the next God. video. So, while watching this, before I even clicked on this, Ryback actually said something. Let me, this is actually from Ryback himself. Right here, it says... The truth, uh, the truth always wins, and I will keep winning. You're, uh, you're keeping me relevant despite being uh, illegally suppressed for 7.5 plus years, and your karma will not be kind. Controversy creates cash, and you will all, you, uh, you will all be fans again the moment I come back. <laughs> he commented. Someone said. Can't wait to see you back, Goldberg. <laughs> oh, my. That's funny, bro. <laughs> That's, someone say, uh, let me see. Right here. You hit, the, you hit the nail on the head. If Punk can return to WWE, anyone can. Except right back. <laughs> I don't know. That's a uh, that's a very interesting question. Would y'all be okay? Would y'all care? Would y'all want Ryback to actually return to WWE since it's a different place now? Would y'all want that? And would y'all just be like, nah, he's good where he's at? Y'all let me know down below. But I appreciate all the love and support. Road to 150K. And I'm still going to speed the YouTube wrestling champion of the world. Appreciate y'all kicking with me. See you next one. Peace.